Hi everyone, it's Dawn. Welcome back to my channel. Happy December. The season of Advent is upon us and I love this time of year, the anticipation of Christmas. I did look up the word Advent in Strong's Concordance and in Hebrew and in Greek. One, it means to come or the coming and the other one it means to arrive. And so then I dig a little bit deeper and it's the arrival of coming or coming of hope which is Christ on Christmas. So I love that. And I did write down a whole bunch of verses that have to do with hope. Like I just Googled it and pulled up the verses and I didn't read them. So each day of Advent, I have 25 of them. I'm reading one verse and kind of meditating on that one verse. It's kind of like my Advent calendar. I just wanted to share that in case any of you would like to do that along with me. I can list the verses that I have written down and I won't put what they say. You can just look them up. Um, it doesn't even matter if you know what they say because um, like I don't know, like when I read the, the scripture, what it's going to say and then I look it up and then I know. There are a couple that, you know, I already know. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. That's just my advent calendar this year. And so we went to the Christmas lights parade in our town. I live in a really cute small town or it's kind of like a, a small city actually. Um, and they decorate the whole downtown area for the holidays. And so we have a holiday light parade every, like right after Thanksgiving, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And my son is in the band at school. He plays the trumpet. He also plays the guitar. He's the, like the only musical kid that I have. And I tried, I had all my kids in music lessons. He's the only one who really likes music a lot. I mean, they all like music, but stuck with his instruments. But he was in the parade, so we all went down to watch the parade. And so that day I did this makeup look and I employed some strategies to make everything last long because it was gonna be a long day and it was a little bit cold very windy and you know your makeup can get messy when you're out walking in the wind or if it's kind of misting like a little bit of snow or sleet or worse you know you need your makeup to really hang on because we are out and about during the holiday season because we have shopping to do <laughs> if you're not doing it all from home so i employed some strategies to help my makeup stay put for a good 16 hour day it is all drugstore like 99.5 percent of my makeup is drugstore and i wanted to share this look with you because i think it came out so pretty and i think that Sometimes when I do a drugstore makeup look, I wonder why I ever buy high end. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I'm really, really pleased <laughs> with the way it came together. You might think it looks awful, but I'm really happy with the way the combination and everything came together. And it really is very long wearing. And it's like a kind of simple look that you could wear during the day, but it also has a little bit of glow and a tiny bit of sparkle to it for the festive holiday season and i thought i would also share with you some questions that i get about certain um, techniques i use so i was going to really focus in on my eyeliner you guys are probably bored to tears but every time i show my eyeliner technique and why i do it the way i do it i always get a question so i thought i would just walk you through it step by step and answer why i do it this way because it is an aging eye <laughs> strategy and it's really long lasting too. And then I also wanted to share with you about cream blushes and how I really make them last. And um, it's really simple, affordable, and I think most of you would like the products, even if you don't select the colors I selected, because all of these products do come in other shades. So you can pick and choose what kind of combination you want to put together. But for my fair skin and strawberry blonde hair, I thought that this was very flattering and I think it would look great on most people. So we are just going to jump in and get started. My base I have on my foundation and I have on my eyelid primer and I have my brows done just for the sake of time. Now I'm going to go in with an eyeshadow palette from L'Oreal and this is the La Nude Intense palette. This one does have some really beautiful nude shades but it also has some like amethyst shades and just some really nice soft kind of pinky shades and I like this palette because none of the shades in this palette lean peachy. They're all more um, amethyst or um, definitely like um 
a cooler tone beige. They're not really warm. So I love this palette and I'm gonna go in with this very light sort of dusky mauve shade. And I just have a Real Techniques crease brush or shader brush and I'm going to apply this to my crease. And like I said, I did put my eyelid primer on and I think that's really important. No matter what eyeshadow I'm using, even if I'm using a cream formula, I'll still use a base beneath it. I just feel like it makes that really smooth canvas for whatever shadow I use to kind of cling to. And I'm just building this up in my crease and above my crease. And that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not even gonna build it up in the outer corner or anything like that. I'm just using it as a transition color. I'm gonna go in with is the Brilliant Eyes from L'Oreal, and this is their liquid eyeshadow, and these come in a lot of different shades. I only purchased two of them, and I'll share the two that I purchased with you. And the one that has the most pigment is this one, and it's Amethyst and I will link it down below. And I also picked up a really white one that I thought would be super pretty for like the inner corner or like here in the brow. Um, I just wanted to see what these two would be like before I decide to purchase any others. And I really like this product. I've only used it once before, but it really held on and I think it has beautiful color payoff for being such a light shade. If you're gonna go ahead and purchase these or have these, my recommendation would be to choose a mid-tone transition shade in a matte that would complement the color that you choose. Um, sort of a more monochromatic look, but there are no rules. You can do whatever you want, but I, on me personally, I like something that's not too far off from what I'm going to be using on my lid. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this, and these have a doe foot applicator, and I can't detect an odor or scent of any kind, which I, makes me believe it's unscented. And what I'm gonna do is just apply a little bit to my mobile lid and pick it up with my finger and share it with the other lid. And since I'm over here now, I'm just gonna kind of spread this out. I like applying these types of products with my finger. I feel like the warmth of my finger really helps kind of spread them out. And it doesn't take any time at all to kind of dry down, but it doesn't dry down too quickly either. Some products dry down so quickly that you really don't even have the time to work with them. And um, this does give you that time to kind of spread it out and it doesn't feel tacky or sticky or anything like that. So I'm ready to go in with my second layer and I'm just gonna, I always wipe it off too, by the way. I wipe off the doe foot applicator just to make sure I don't have like any chunks on there. And I'm just gonna put a little bit more on both eyes this time. And I'm really concentrating on the outer corner here, not so much the inner corner. These blend out so pretty. They just kind of sheer out, but they're not too sheer, but they're not completely opaque either. I kind of wish I picked up the bronze one to compare to my hourglass scattered light just to see if they're if they're really close or not um so pretty you could also use these as a halo and put like a really dark shade on the outer corner and on the inner and then put this right in the center for a halo eye look that would be really beautiful okay and i'm gonna try i didn't do this last time i used this but i'm gonna try to really build it up in the outer corner now and I did wipe the applicator off, so there isn't a lot there. So even though I'm kind of pouncing, it looks like a lot of product on, I'm really not. I wiped it off pretty well. And just pat it in. And it really does build up beautifully. What I'm noticing is that it does build up so that it's more opaque and not sheer anymore, but it doesn't make the color any deeper. So the color has essentially stayed the same from the first coat. And um, so the color stays very true, but now it's more opaque. Um, I really like these a lot. I don't know how long these have been out, but I'm regretting not trying them sooner. Yeah, this one's really, really nice. I might get more shades in this because I'm just loving these 
sort of pseudo sparkly eye looks, a little bit wet eye look. So before I do anything else, let me bring you in. And you don't have to be super precise with them either. Um, as you saw, I just kind of just applied it. Nothing went underneath my eye and um, it just stays in place. They're so easy. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is apply some long wearing eyeliner, waterproof eyeliner. And every time I go through this technique, I always get questions. So I am gonna explain it step by step. And I don't think I've ever done that before. I usually just kind of talk to you a little bit about what brush I'm using or why I do things this way, but I don't go step by this step. This is the eyeliner technique that I've been doing for about the past year. During COVID, when there wasn't a lot going on and we were sheltering at home, I watched a lot of makeup artist videos. And I think I got a little bit better at applying makeup at least onto my own face. And I started learning things about my face that I never really noticed before. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is tell you why I apply my liner the way I do. So if you look at my 53 year old eyes, they are deep set eyes and um, they're not really hooded, but my eyelids, fold back into my eye socket when I look right at you. So this is also why when I do eyeshadow, I have to apply my eyeshadow not into the crease, but above the crease as well. Because when I'm looking straight at you, my crease rolls back. It's not really an aging issue as much as it's an anatomical issue. Like some people have hooded eyes and they just were born with them. They get more hooded as time goes on. And my little crease vanishing into my eye socket also seems to get, you know, as this area gets a little hooded as I age, I'm gonna have to employ some different techniques. But the reason I apply my eyeliner, the way I apply my eyeliner, and the way I do it is I usually use an angled brush like this. I try to show a different one almost every time I share it, just so you know that you can find these brushes anywhere. This one is from Real Techniques. Elf makes them, MAC makes them, um, BK Beauty makes them, Sonia Kashuk makes them. It's a dense, angled brush. And bear with me if you've seen this before. I've just never talked it through step by step and I always get questions. So a brush like this one, it doesn't have to be this one, but this one's very affordable. The e.l.f. one is also very affordable, but um, these work perfectly fine. And I usually use an eyeshadow and I use MAC Carbon, which is a, like a carbon black. It's not a really black black. It's more of a deep charcoal black. So it's a little more flattering on my fair features. But since this is a long wearing eye makeup video, I'm going to share with you another product and it's the Lasting Drama from Maybelline. I may have already said that. And I'm going to use these today. And the technique that I'm doing is because if you look at my eyes very close, in this outer corner right here, you'll see I have some folds. And I always watch makeup tutorials where these beautiful women apply their eyeliner and then flick that wing up and they give tutorials, it's step by step, and they all look great. And I can never achieve success doing it that way. And I learned that it's because when I go like this, and apply my eyeliner and flick it out. It looks so beautiful, but then I let go and it's skipping in these folds. And everyone will tell you, all the makeup artists will say, don't do that. Just apply it and then flick. And that sounds great. So I try and it still doesn't look good because it's not smooth here. And there's nothing I can do about that short of surgery. So. I've got these folds here, so that flick right here at the last lash doesn't work for I me. I still like liquid eyeliner, so I can apply it all the way to the last lash and stop. But then, if I want my line to be smooth, I have to start here and flick up, but it still gets caught up in the 
folds here. So it just doesn't work for me. So during COVID, I learned this other technique and I think it might be called the reverse cat eye, but it might not. It's just close to that technique. So I have my lasting drama from Maybelline and I'm just picking up on the edge of the brush like this. So the thing that I always forget to mention that I want to mention if you're trying this technique is that often I use Prep and Prime from MAC to get the brush a little wet and then I stamp it into the MAC carbon and it does pick up quite a bit of shadow. And the part that I always forget to say is that I take a tissue then and I press it onto the tissue and it just takes off that little bit of excess because if you don't and you press it, your line will be a little too thick and there's no way to really blend it out without it smudging and looking a little messy. So that's a really important step to do the stamp. And if you don't get enough on your brush and you need to do it again, you have a template there that you can just easily do it a second time and that should be sufficient. So I'm just gonna do it to this eye. And so I line it up right here with the little crease here. Like some people say your last lash. I just do it at absolutely the corner of my eye. And I angle it upward. So I've placed it just where it needs to be. And once you stamp it into place, if you want to smudge it out a little bit further, take the brush and flick it upside down. And now you've got the pointy end that was at the top, now at the bottom and you can flick it out. Then I go back into the liner. Again, press the excess off. And now I take the brush with the pointy end up and I just attach it to the end of the liner and then just drag. And you can go as far as you want. You can stop right here, which is also very pretty. You don't have to do the full length of your eye, which can sometimes close our eyes in and make them look smaller. Or if you want, sometimes I just kind of drag it, not to the inner corner, but like to the last lash here. So I use my lashes as my guide. Whenever I do this and then I look at you, I always think it looks a little severe. But once I get my eyeshadow on and do the rest of my eye makeup, you'll see that it will look soft and it will look natural and it won't look like right now, like I just have all this brown eyeliner smudged underneath my eye. What I like to do next is take a little more of the product. I just like to get right here on the inner corner and kind of smudge it into my lashes. I like to just kind of push it into my lashes. That's that. So now I'm going to go put on a very long wearing drugstore tubing mascara. This is the very first tubing mascara I ever tried and it's the L'Oreal Double Extend. I've shared this on my channel before. Um, I do have many other tubing mascaras. This one is still pretty good even though it's just a like eight dollars at the drugstore and um, I really there's nothing I really don't like about it except that the formula is a little more matte than I like but I have it in the blackest shade you can get and there are a couple of black shades and now I'm starting to wonder if the one that I selected is more black because it's matte and maybe it does come in a formula that's not quite so matte I'm gonna have to do some research on that because if this comes in a black that isn't quite so matte then I would like this just as much as I like the other. I'm gonna go apply this and I'll be okay, right back. I have my mascara on and now I'm gonna take the white Brilliant Eyes and this is in the shade String of Pearls and I'm just gonna place a little bit right here. And as you can see, it's got like um, purple, it's got pink, it's just very iridescent. And I'm gonna just blend that out in the arch of my brow. And that's really pretty, really, really pretty. And I'm just gonna take a little bit on the tip of my finger and apply it to the inner corner right here. Just a little sparkle 
okay, and that's all I'm going to do with that. This, that's all I was going to use this one for. So it should last me till 25 to blush. And I did use these cheek heats when they first came out. I had a really pink one because it was in the summertime. And I also had a coral one. And I liked them a lot. And I will link this shade. It's kind of a nude shade. It's more um, like rosy, I think. It's not quite as bright as the pink or as bright as the coral. It's something that I thought would look really pretty in the winter months. And it is. So my trick with these is to just spread a little out onto my finger and pick it up with a stippling brush. And this one is from Morphe. It has two different lengths of bristles. It has more dense bristles and then it gradually gets thinner till it has like very spaced out bristles up here. And it's really great for diffusing product exactly where you want it. I'm just going to use this to apply this and then I'm going to show you how I make my cream blushes really long wearing. And so I'm just going to pounce it and this is the trick to get it right where you want it. I'm not dragging it or anything like that. Kind of focusing on the apple of my cheek and then just bringing it up a little bit onto my cheekbone like so and I'll let that dry a little bit and I'll do the other cheek. Okay, now I have that basically just where I want it. I didn't drag it around or overly blend it. I really wanted to go in like a circle, like a wider area and then up. And I'll show you why. I apply it like this is because I want to go in kind of a wide area around my cheek and then up. So the reason I like to stipple on my cream blush is that... I like it to be in a wider surface area. I feel like cream blushes are so kind of dewy and youthful and they look beautiful on women no matter what your age is. And often we just stop at the cream blush and then we set it. And even if I set it with a translucent setting powder, it's kind of look, gonna look a little less dewy and not quite as glowy. So what I like to do is take another blush and it doesn't matter what kind of blush as long as it's sheer. The MAC Extra Dimension blushes are perfect. Um, I love any kind of baked blush that's sheer. This one is Berry Amore from Milani, and it's just a sheer baked blush. And I like this one because the tones in it already kind of match the tones in this one. So I have Berry Amore, and I have a more densely packed brush and it doesn't matter what brand as long as it's kind of a bouncy brush and not a stippling brush all the fibers are essentially the same length and it's a little bit bouncy and so what I like to do is just kind of swirl it in tap it off really well so you've got some product and then just kind of pounce it over your blush but you're not going to blend it or drag it you're just going to bounce it right where you put that cream blush and the reason you're gonna do it that way is because if I bring you in really close, you'll see that the cream blush is kind of peeking out around where I'm setting it with the powder blush. And I don't wanna move that cream blush around or potentially wipe any of it off. And I like that kind of dewy glow around the powder blush. So basically all I did was set my cream blush with a complementing color in a sheer formula powder blush. And this trick will work no matter what blushes you use. You can use like the Fenty Cream Blush and top it with the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finishes, like I said. You can go even more high-end than so that. So whatever blush you have in your arsenal will work just fine for this trick. And I promise you it will last all day long. Okay, I did gently line my lips with the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat and Pillow Talk. I have these in the mini size, so they're not really that expensive, but they're definitely not drugstore. The reason why I grabbed this is because it works with almost any shade of lipstick I wear, and it's just so easy for me. So this is what I use like 90% of the time. Okay, the next thing I'm going to share with you is a lipstick. And it's not going to be a long-wearing lipstick like the liquid lips that you then put gloss over. I love those. I have so many of those. But I wanted to use like a proper lipstick that would be a little bit balmy and condition my lips. And I am a very hardcore lover of L'Oreal Color Riche lipsticks. I know a lot of you are too, and I know some of you don't like them. They do have a strong fragrance, and it's not an unpleasant fragrance. 
it's just kind of perfumey, just like they use in Lancome, because L'Oreal and Lancome are like one conglomerate. And I think it's to add more of a luxury feeling to it. I'd be fine without it, but I'm also fine with it, and it doesn't bother my lips. There are a lot of really good conditioning agents in these. They never dry out my lips. Um, they go on beautifully. I can get four to five hours of wear before I have to reapply. And that's even if I eat like a greasy salad or something for lunch with like an oily dressing. I'll need to reapply it, but I'll still have some on my lips. So they are pretty long wearing for the type of product that it is. And my favorite shade in the summer months is mauve. And there's another one called Montmore, which I think is a good transitional shade between my summer shade and the one I'm going to share with you today. This is mauve. And look how beautiful that is. It's just the most beautiful, like summery pink. It's a little bit sheer. And it's so flattering and I'm beautiful. I'm gonna show you two shades that I love right now. And one is Organza. And I found out about this from one of you. It might've been my subscriber friend, Julie. If, it, if it's not, or if it is, let me know. Because I wanna give whoever mentioned this credit because this was discontinued and they brought the color back because so many people were upset. So this is how this one looks. That's Organza how pretty that is. And this one is Sugar Plum. I've never tried this one until now. And the color is just beautiful. It's like a rosy plum with some gold in it, some little gold shimmer, but it's just a hint. It's not overpowering or anything like that. And I'm going to swatch it next to Organza. So that's what that looks like. So Organza is a little plummier, I think. Sugar Plum is the coral, hint of coral in it. Just is like a warmer, rosy shade. And Sugar Plum. So that's what that looks like. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just warm up the perimeter of my face a little bit using Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula. This is in, I think, the shade Sunkissed. I'll link it. It's one of the lightest shades. Just pick a little up on that brush that I pounced my blush on with because I don't mind if a little bit of the blush color comes through. And I'm not going to use a setting powder or anything like that because I don't want to change the integrity of the makeup that I have on and the foundation that I'm wearing doesn't really need to be set. So I would just recommend if you want everything to be super long wearing to use a setting spray. And I don't have a drugstore one on hand right now. I do have this one size and I'll just give myself a little spritz. Like that. Super long wearing, affordable drugstore makeup look with some techniques sharing with you how I create a wing and make my blush stay put all day and um, some new products that you may have not tried before. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit like, subscribe to my channel, leave any questions or comments below. I love interacting with you and I hope you have a blessed and beautiful day. I'll see you next time.